Hey, what's going on guys? Reed here and I'm back with another tech video. And this time we're going to be talking about how to emulate macOS 7.5.3 in Basilisk 2 on Mac OS X. So basically with this, if you're running Catalina, there's a, a few differences, but which I'm going to go over. But basically you're going to be down. I, I advise you to pay close attention because we are going to be downloading a lot of parts. There's gonna, we're going to be handling a lot of files, and there's going to be a lot to keep track of. But really, Basilisk 2 is takes is actually pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. And yeah, I will be back in just a minute. Hey guys, I am back. We are here on the Mac now, and basically there's a few different things we're going to want to download. First, you're going to download Basilisk 2 from this link. I'm linking all these in the description, but basically, this is a really important one because you, it's got a few different downloads you need to get from it. So basically, you can go ahead and download this one. This is the main application. If you have ten, if you're running macOS 10.3 through 10.15, 10.3, 10 10.13, which I am, I'm running macOS Catalina. You can check that over here at the logo about this Mac. It says it right here. But you're also going to want a key codes file, which is this link right here. You're going to want a key codes file only if you're not only if you're not using the US keyboard. If you're still you can still have it if you use the US keyboard, but it basically allows other keyboards layouts to be available. Now this is where it changes for Catalina users. The Basilisk 2 GUI application is basically an application we're going to use to set it up, to set up Basilisk 2. But it's 32-bit and won't run in Catalina, of course, because Catalina ended 32-bit app support. Basically, there's a beta of a new GUI for it right here. This one works with Catalina. So go ahead and download that one. See, it's downloading. But, and then another thing you're going to want. If you are, only if you are using the new Basilisk 2 GUI that is not, th that works in Catalina, you're also going to want HFS Utils GUI right here. This will allow us to create a disk disk images that work with um, Basilisk 2 because of the fact that since it since the new Basilisk 2 GUI is a beta, it will not be allowed you will not be allowed to create images from that. Another thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need a ROM file to do it. I'm gonna search Mac ROMs. Oh my gosh, I'm doing it again. I'm searching the wrong thing. But Instead, you're going to want to search redundant robot. Pops up right here. You're going to go there. Cheap Shaver tutorial. I know we're not using Cheap Shaver, but he linked a bunch of ROMs here. You're going to want the Performer ROM for Basilisk 2. Another thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to download a boot floppy right here. This is basically, this allows you to boot Mac OS. There we go. That's downloaded. Now this is where it gets advanced. I'm not going to download this yet because first we need to set up the folders because that's a lot. But first I'd like to create a few folders. Call it Bas Basilisk 2. And then you're going to create a folder within that. Call it Shared. And create one more folder outside of it. And just call it in the folder where the Basilisk 2 is. Call it Temp. Now, go ahead and move the Basilisk 2 application and the GUI into Basilisk 2. Also move the key codes and the disk tools. Take this ROM from here. You can probably trust this now. Move this into Basilisk 2. I prefer to leave this out since this is separate from Basilisk 2. But now our next thing to do is download the 19 installer parts. There's a lot of them, so you're going to want to be careful at this part. When you're downloading the 19 installer parts, you're just going to click all of these to download them. Be careful because you don't want to miss even one of them. Miss one of them and the whole installation will fail. So go ahead and just click these. Just gonna download these. I would wait till the icon shows that goes into your downloads before you click another one. Okay, and you do not need the system 7.5.3 and so. 
That is not required. So you'll notice all of these. I would move these into temp. It's a pretty tedious task here. Takes some time. Okay. Now check in temp. They should be in order starting from here. Make sure you have all of them. Okay, I have them all. Now this is where we're going to double the amount of files we actually have. You're going to click each one of these to expand them. You should notice as you're doing this that the first part will have an SMI extension. This is a disk image for the leg it's a legacy disk image basically. And the rest of them should have a dot part extension. So this is perfectly normal. The SMI file is the one we're going to be doing. The part one is just another part of the installer. Oops, I think I expanded two by mistake. Yeah, if you select two at a time, just trash the one that looks like an image. Start again. It's really no big deal. I've had that issue also. But, so it looks like these are all expanded. Now you can remove the .bin files. Just go ahead and remove these .bin files. Leave the part in SMI ones. This is important. Okay. Looks like this, do you see it's this is what I mean by tedious task. By the way, we're also gonna move these to the temp folder in a minute. Well actually to the shared folder. So be ready to do that. It should put them back in order when you do that. So please make sure you have them all once again. Because through these operations here with all these files and a big number of them, you could easily lose a part or two. Did not mean to do that. Okay. Take all of these and just select them. You're going to Command C. Head back to where your Basilisk 2 folder is and go to Shared and just Command V in. Once again, they're back in order. Make sure you have them all. Now you should be able to delete the temp folder. Next, we're going to go ahead and create some disk images. Run HFS Utils GUI. You might need to right click it or control click and then click open and then press open again to cuz it is not signed, but I know it's safe. And here it is. So we're going to create our hard drive images. Start by clicking new image. Save it with whatever name you like. I call it macOS. Set this to a .img. Give it another, give it a label, preferably macOS. Set the size to be custom and give it one and change the drop down to gigabyte. And make sure this is set to HFS. Go ahead and press save. It will go ahead and create it, which is not a long process at all. Doesn't take that long. And we're going to create a second one too. So be ready for that. Okay. Go to new image, once again, call this one installer parts. Save it as a .img. You need, this label needs to be installer parts. You need to be able to differentiate between this one and the other one. Set the size to be 100 megabytes. Set the format to once again be HFS. You don't want HFS plus. Press save. It, this one goes quicker. Move both of these into your basilisk folder. Now our next step, we're going to run the GUI, configure some stuff. Now the good thing about Basilisk 2 and the GUI is that it saved your settings from last time. So if you, if you just run it, it saves your, you'll notice all my previous ones are here. We're going to change something still, but this right here, you, don't, you can ignore this, but this is your prefs path. So file stored on your hard drive or a folder and basically it saves all your preferences. So if you delete this, the all Basilisk 2 files and you want to start again and you leave this, it will save your preferences even if you delete the GUI application. Just a very helpful little thing. I should have them already set to where they need to be. I'm going to show them just so that you can know what to do. But basically you're going to, this create button is disabled like I said because we're in Catalina and this is the beta. That is why we use the other one right here. You should be able, if you are running, not running Catalina and you're not using the beta, 
you can go ahead and just press create here and create them. More on that in the immaculation guide I used, which will be linked in the description. But for now, click add, browse to your disk tools. You're also going to click add again and add installer parts. And you're going to add your macOS one. If it says not found over here, you can ignore it. It's just fine. Set this browse right here to Unix root browse to your shared folder. Make sure this is unchecked. If you also want to, you can go to beta. If you're in the beta and you can accept the license agreement, do not press cancel. It will close the application and you'll lose your settings. Press OK. Then now you can skip the SCSI tab. Head to graphics slash sound. Set this to window. 30 hertz will speed it up, but dynamic is recommended for newer machines. Set this width and height to be a width and height less than your max than your screen size. Audio settings can be ignored. This 1024 by 768 is recommended. Now in keyboard and mouse, if you used a key codes file, check use raw key codes and browse to your key codes file. Right there. And then this is a matter of taste. You can change these however you'd like, but those are the defaults. Now move to ports. There's only one thing to change here. Change the Ethernet port and make sure it says Slurp. This is basically going to make it to where we can use the wireless in the mach machine. Now head over to System. You're going to set this to Quadra 900. Set the CPU type to 68040. ROM file. Go ahead and browse to your ROM file now. Make sure both of these are checked. Set, make sure this is 128. Now the GIT tab, all should be checked and make sure this is 2048. When you're done, you can you can press start if you're running the non-beta one, and it will just go ahead and start it for you. If you are running the beta, click save. Now I know it looks like nothing happened, but it did save. Just go quick now. Now you can run Basilisk 2. Yes, we can open it. You'll see this. You'll see this you'll see this warning saying system software on this disk is designed for starting up from a floppy disk only. Just press OK regardless. Now here's where it's just the process of knowing what to do, really. So you'll notice that this Mac or this emulated classic MacOS does have color. That is a fact because Basilisk 2 emulates a newer color Macintosh, at least new at the time. But what you're gonna wanna do is first you're going to want to open the Unix disk. Take all the installer parts here and just go ahead and, oops, there's no scrolling I don't think, but take all these and just copy them into the installer parts disk. It will go ahead and read and write them and copy them and all sorts of stuff, which shouldn't take too long. You can go, I'll, I'll leave the camera on for this. Don't worry, it takes, it doesn't take that long. But when that is done, we're going to open yet another disk image, and then we're going to go ahead and install it. Now, even after we install it, we're not done yet. Don't end the video, or don't stop watching once you get once we've installed it, because there's just a couple more settings to change to make sure it boots from the hard drive properly and stuff like that. So. I know, I know it might be a tedious task as for some parts, but you've got to follow it if you're going to get it right. Okay, so it's almost done. Alright, now that that's done, you can close the Unix disk, head over to installer parts and run the .smi. Set the license agreement, it'll verify it. And what you'll notice is yet another CD image will pop up. This is all running from the SMI file for the CD image. Just run the installer file. You can click continue. Now be careful. You need to switch it to say macOS by clicking switch disk. If you want to set custom install, you can actually add some stuff. I guess, I guess we can add it. Doesn't really matter to me. But uh, networking connectivity probably needs to be checked if you're going to, I think easy install might include it. I'm just going to check all these. But you need to you need to click switch disk. And you can't set it to Unix. You need to set it, can't set it to installer parts either. It's, it'll let you install to installer parts, but you don't want to. Because that's where our parts in this entire thing is running from. Click switch disk again, and when it says macOS, you can finally press install. 
prepare. You'll notice that we'll go ahead and read all this stuff and do all that. You shouldn't have to insert any additional floppies or anything because that is important. an important thing to note that Basilisk 2 with all its helpful features of the GUI saving its settings and stuff, which is its huge upside, it does not support switching floppy disks or CDs while, while it is running. So that is one of the little pains that can happen during the install process and that is why when it comes to the WinWorld version of the software, you you don't use you don't use that. Well, you only use it on the Mini Mac. So go ahead and press quit when that's done. Now we're go ahead and shut it down. Basilisk 2 should quit on its own. We're gonna change just a few settings around. Open up GUI again. Remove the disk tools and the installer parts. Then head to system and just set this to Mac 2 CI. Because it says right here Mac OS 7.x. Now go ahead and save, quit, run Basilisk 2. Huh. I don't know, but I know it should work. Maybe it's because I selected all the stuff, all the stuff during installation. So if you get something like this, you might need to, let me just try. But really, if you get stuff like this, you can go ahead and do some troubleshooting on that. I don't know why it's doing that, but if you get an error like this and you can't, close out of it probably because I selected other probably because I selected all the install stuff just press control escape it's like a force shutdown of the machine but when you're done with it go ahead and just trash the basilisk 2 folder and HFS utils GUI and then you should be done now yeah guys that's gonna do it for this video apologize for the error at the end but really if you didn't select all the stuff it probably wouldn't happen because it did work for me so yeah that's going to do it for this video. If you have any issues, feel free to comment down below and I will try to help you. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.